Oh, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. All right. And that's it. Thank you very much. Take care. So we're here on a very special occasion, of course, a, 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 a very monumental day in history. And um, I'm excited to share a story with you um, regarding my mom. September, uh, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve uh, 2011. I had just finished a concert in my hometown of Cleveland. My whole family came out. We had a good time. So my mom wasn't um, feeling well to the point where we had to take her to the emergency room. Shortly after, I found out that she had stage four cancer out of nowhere. So as I'm sure many of you can relate, that debilitating blow, it like knocks the wind out you. It feels like you're suffocating. I found that through the coming months that I really kind of lost the strength um, that I really needed to help give my mom, give my family to get through this. Um, even though we knew she had great doctors and she had uh, wonderful family support, still that wasn't enough. And I, I felt that I was running even further away from the situation. You know, given that music for me has always been very um, therapeutic, I decided to go to music as a way to um, uh, express some of the emotions that I was feeling in hopes that I can regain the strength. So I decided to write this song based on the opposite emotions of what I was feeling. The biggest one for me that was most disturbing is just that element of unknown, that waiting, the unknown. And uh, so I decided to start the song by writing the ending first. So I knew exactly how it was going to end. And then I worked backwards. And through the song, developing the melody, it was a very predictable melody. We knew exactly where it was going at all times. That really kind of helped me, especially having the feelings of, um, you know, darkness and kind of being depressed. I wanted to write one of the most beautiful and soulful yet serene uh, melodies that I, can, um, that I can think of, and especially in the state of being confused. I wanted to write the most clear and concise melody. I wrote it in the key of my C, which has no flats and no sharps for you music nerds, you know, and uh, I just used only the, uh, the notes of that C major scale for the utmost clarity in my mind. So fast forward a year and a half, um, we got the news that my mom's actually in, in remission. So incredibly thankful for that. She's cool now, she's watching, and she's hearing this for the first time, definitely. And uh, um, just a couple of days after that, I had the pleasure to perform this in New York City at Jazz and Lincoln Center with her front and center. And uh, it was at that moment, and I knew uh, exactly why I wrote this song. So this is... Um, for my mom, it's called A Prayer For You.
Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Cool. Thank you. So after my mom got through this, she put together a cancer support group at her church. And it was through the, that group that I met a lovely woman in her 50s who was also feeling much better after going through uh, cancer. And uh, she had taken a liking to my music, and, and we had uh, talked about having her come to a concert. Well, one day, um, got a phone call from her family to say that things that took a turn for the worse, and cancer came back. And she was actually in hospice in the last moments of her life. She said um, what, what incredible pain she was in, that she wasn't really communicating with her family. She, they had asked if we would come by uh, to perform uh, music uh, to help ease some of the pain in her transition. So when we arrived there, again, the doctor said how she hadn't really uh, communicated much, um, and her ears were very sensitive. So we set, out, uh, set up outside of the, um, her room and closed the door halfway, and I thought of uh, bossa nova music, which always has kind of a euphoric, beautiful kind of feel to it. And we decided to play a very light version of a song written by Charlie Chaplin called Smile. It goes like this. Had, thank you. And, and when we finished playing, something truly miraculous happened. She she woke up. She had um, she had asked for us to come by her her bedside, and, and she grabbed my hand and said how much she enjoyed the music, and and she thanked us for coming. Couldn't believe it. She was thanking us for coming. Um, this uh, this experience not only for us has been unbelievably humbling. Most importantly, uh, she was able to stay uh, with her family a few days past that, and they were able to communicate and share more stories before ultimately she passed away. Um, such a wonderful, um, bittersweet kind of experience we had. Now, going halfway around the world to the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi, we had uh, an opportunity to perform for, for patients. Um, various hospitals in Abu Dhabi. For the very first time, people were hearing jazz and different music we played. And we set up in the atrium, kind of a semicircle, and as the patients were coming in, you could just, f you walk in the room, you could feel the pain and the suffering, you could hear the moaning. And it was, uh, it was very uncomfortable for, for everyone. There was a, there was a, a group of um, um, a women from a psychiatric hospital um, that had come, and they were very kind of, you know, fidgety, moving around, just felt very uncomfortable. We were very nervous to even play as we didn't want to disrupt. But we wanted to try to transform the room, the feel of the room. And fortunately, our good friend, Billy Thornton, from Tifton, Georgia, was here to entertain and to play some country music. And we were a little bit nervous about playing some country music in Abu Dhabi, for sure. <laughs> but as soon as he busted into this groove, those who can get up were dancing and clapping. Those who couldn't were simply grooving in their chair. There was a little boy, he couldn't get up, he had some... You know, he was tied to a lot of the machines, but he was grooving, he was smiling, he was right up next to Billy, and we went into this song. You hear that train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sun 
sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in for some prison. Time keeps moving on. That train just keeps on rolling on down to San Antonio. When I was just a youngin', my mama told me, son, always be a good one. Don't mess around with guns. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. I hear that lonesome whistle. I hang my head and cry. Great. We had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time. Thank you. And the doctors said that they haven't seen so many people smile in such a long time. For us to be a part of it, this is unbelievable. So in closing, I'd just like to say, of course, thank you for letting us share these heartfelt stories. And as artists, as, it is, as wonderful it is to go around the world and entertain and have a good time, when we have those special moments, to be, able to, to be able to communicate on a much deeper level when we have even just a moment for a time, in time when somebody could forget about the pain that they're going through, the suffering, if we can comfort them, if they could experience just a moment of joy, it makes our job all worth it and really deepens our commitment to sharing our music with everyone around the world. So we thank you very much for your time and certainly look forward to hearing the next presentations. Thank you. Yeah.